Let me unmute myself first. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I am your host and Game Master, Dan, at MadsIDM on Twitter. And we are here on Variant Rolls to play some Invisible Sun. Another special night as, sadly, this will be our last night for four whole weeks. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do um, as I get hauled into the gray for extended periods of time. Uh, we'll talk about that later. But uh, this is an extra special night because we are raising money for charity. Uh, I will post the link in uh, chat periodically, but we are running as part of a charity stream tonight uh, organized by the wonderful Ken Davidson, uh, Radio Free Wolf, raising money for the Big Bad Con Scholarship Fund. And uh, so all of your donations tonight, if you donate uh, to the CrowdRise uh, fund, which I again, I will post the link periodically in chat. Uh, the fun things will happen just like if you donate bits to the channel. So uh, depending on your amount, we'll, you know, draw a sooth card or uh, trigger an intrusion or something fun. So enough of me yammering. Uh, let's let everyone go around and introduce themselves. And I'm going to start uh, in our bottom left with Annie. Annie, how you doing? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Uh, I'm Annie. I'm at Alphabet Seeds on Twitter. And tonight, as always, I'll be playing Henrietta Delacour, the uh, connected empathic weaver who disgorges creatures. And uh, tonight, uh, I have a new creature to vomit. And oh, it will be vomited. <laughs> excellent i can't wait to see what slimy monstrosity worms its way out of your gullet tonight <laughs> it's gonna be neat excellent excellent i am here for it uh all right let's go up into cory cory how are you doing hello i'm good uh my name is cory i am on twitter uh with the same name my pronouns are he, they, and today, or tonight rather, um, I'm going to be jumping back into the role of Alice. Alice is an ardent maker who, who turns tales into reality. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I am great. Or I'm here for it. That's great. Sorry, folks. I'm all over the place tonight. I'm just going to kick it down. Alex, how you doing? Hey everybody, I'm doing well. I have a microphone tonight. Uh, slowly but surely, actually getting equipment to stream properly. Uh, I'm Alex, uh, you can find me on Twitter, Axel Autocure. I'm playing Emma Elizabeth, who is a stoic goetic who uh, cages adversaries. And yeah, I think that's all I got. Excellent. All right, and Sam, how are you doing? I'm there, I was muted, sorry. <laughs> Okay, I'm okay. Um, I'm Samantha Darcy, I'm 65th Victor on Twitter. I play Lucky, an ardent apostate who shepherds minds. Excellent, excellent. All right, so the objective today is to gain entry to the red. Uh, we've spent the last several sessions uh, well, more than several sessions on the run from the fuzz in Saturine, who pretty much at this point wants to throw you all in jail uh, or worse. And uh, who knows about your friends and family? I don't. Well, maybe. Anyway, um, other people's extended does anybody, friends. Does anybody else have any friends or family? Well, I'm not Emma listening Elizabeth to those parents. Family. Oh, right, right. <laughs> the rest of us. No, no. <laughs> Alice has parents. They're just not <laughs> beings of sentience. Anymore. I really, I really want to meet them so badly. <laughs> we can go to the flea market and try and find them. Uh, yeah, we should. <laughs> Scrap everything you wrote tonight, Dad. We're going to the flea market. Yeah, right. <laughs> we can do that. We can do that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, most most recently you were um, attacked uh, by some uh, some very bad people, and you tracked down one sweets and managed to strike some bargains to pull some demons out of them. 
one of which is comfortably nestled all up inside Lucky's soul and maturing and feeding off of Lucky's emotions in order to mature. And I'm sure that can't possibly go poorly at all. Uh, and the other one is tromping around with Emma Elizabeth at her beck and call, ready to be used as a key to open the gate. Uh, and you know that this gate is inside an arena that is inside the ruined expanses of the city. Uh, and specifically, it's uh, in the ruined expanses outside of the Marquis District. And that's what you know. Um, but you have had some time. The question is, where have you all spent uh, spent the last little bit? Okay, well, I actually wanted to uh, bring that up because we didn't get to touch on it during our side scenes. But as uh, Lucky's house is otherwise unoccupied at the moment, I think he would have invited Alice to come stay with him since her house has been destroyed. Mm -hmm. She can sleep on the couch if she wants. Alice would <laughs> gladly get out of the sewers and go stay in a real place. <laughs> All right. So... So we should we should determine a little bit how things have gone because of course lucky you know that you've been under surveillance oh, yeah. as has your house right because uh -huh. right, it, yeah. its other occupant is mm -hmm. currently in hiding uh yeah. so i have played a sooth card to get us started And the first sooth card I played to start us off tonight is the Relentless Rumor. Mm. Again, no coincidences in the actuality. Uh, so Magic of the Green right now is Enhanced. Magic of the Pale is Hindered. Uh, but specifically, uh, this card relates to Secrets, Ravens, Books, and Flame. Uh, truth, Searching, and Futility. So oh, there's futility, never good. <laughs> <laughs> There's never a real truth in whispered rumors, searching for authenticity amid the clandestine, uh, and yet still we try, we listen. Um, I think this is pretty good because for your purposes, this means that while the uh, pristine guard and other agents of the city are actively on the lookout for you, you're managing to keep yourself you know sort of on the down low and uh <laughs> yeah uh but that said i think that means that you're not staying at any of your known abodes uh you should probably also not consider dark basement safe either i know i wouldn't know okay okay so uh then i'll invite alice to couch surf with me <laughs> Yeah. Shit. Lucky, Lucky has pretty extensive contacts in the hollows. He does. Yeah. Um, and also, I mean, other contacts just sort of out in the city among sort of like non Vizle. Mm -hmm. Um, but if I was going to suggest a place that would be a little off the radar of the authorities, it would be the hollows. Yeah. Lots of abandoned That's buildings. Fine. I know at least three people down there, so. <laughs> good <laughs> yeah no one else knows but like he's kind of a big deal in the hollows <laughs> that shouldn't surprise anybody really but speaking of lucky being a big deal <laughs> is he still is he still a pit fighting champion has he held, has he held on to that title i need to know i don't yeah, think he's i don't think he's gone back down to defend it unbelievable <laughs> he's, he's like he's, He's a legend. He's a myth. <laughs> but he's been stripped of his title in, in absentia. Because <laughs> you do actually have to, to maintain it. No one's, no one's sure he was ever really there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, so if Lucky and Alice, at least, are going to stay in the hollows, what about everybody else? That's a really good question that I totally thought about. 
Uh, she's probably doing what she was doing before, uh, which was like spending minimal time at home and otherwise like hopping between like work and various libraries and you know not necessarily trying to not go to the same places like twice like work well i mean work is different there's like a back door and and all that oh okay okay so so <laughs> over trying the to, course like, maintain like sort of normalcy like yeah so over the course of the week henrietta you absolutely notice and get the feeling that you are being watched like periodically you just you know you turn around and people are focused on you too intently you don't see like the pristine guard they just look like normal people Mm -hmm. Uh, but you get the unsettling indication that you are under observation cool good for us (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no one harasses you but you're but definitely being watched yeah probably post at some point on our vislagram like yo people following you too <laughs> <laughs> and everyone else is yup yup <laughs> <laughs> okay uh em elizabeth what about you where where are you spending your time um uh... Unfortunately, still hanging out in the <laughs> sewer library. Um, honestly, it's it could be worse because I, I've been spending a lot of time there to begin with, and like I can summon things. So I imagine they've just been like going back and forth, like yep. bringing fresh clothes, picking up food, like dropping off like work for the um, goetics so I can keep my job. Just like you know. Like, I've, I've got my own little, like, base of operations down here, and it's not nice, but it could be worse. And I don't know how often Sister Midnight is around, but she seems a good enough conversation partner. Yeah, she probably pops in periodically um, to keep you up to date with any relevant information. Uh, you do notice that, like your like, your jobs with your order... They don't stop, but there's a, like, you definitely notice, like, the level goes from a here to a here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're, you're hidden away, and so you're not being watched, but you get the impression that, you know, you probably hear periodically that, like, rumors are swirling around and, and people are a little leery of uh, sending you work. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So you spend you spend the week recuperating. Um, does anyone have any other like specific um, bits of like research that you were looking to do? Anything in particular you were looking to sort of pick up before you head out? I just did want to start doing the legacy artifact research, but I think that could be a a side scene probably. I don't know if it'll be immediately relevant. Right, right. And and Alice, you know, like the, the level if I if I judge everybody's level of threat, like Alice's is about a here mm-hmm. and and Lucky's is, is probably about here and Emma Elizabeth's is probably about here and Henrietta's is probably about here in terms of where they are on the on the radar with uh, with the authorities. Oh that, that with the authority, great. I was thought you were saying that henrietta was a was a puny weakling and we were gonna have words <laughs> well yeah because henrietta is like the one who's probably is, done some of the most damage is alice like the most wanted because she killed the one guard <laughs> um i think alice was the original person picked up for suspicion uh, right because of cutting nigel's arm off in the That'll vicinity of where the crime happened right and the investigators have magical abilities so like that other violence and and things like that were enough to trigger them together uh and then lucky mind controlling somebody who like 
was totally aware of it after the fact and is a police officer essentially um escalated that and then yes (laughs) alice has also killed other guards uh (laughs) and then said killings took place inside emma elizabeth's house where are emma's parents doing what rich people do like have you ever seen anyone's rich parents in tv like well yeah but like like wouldn't the pristine guard be coming to ask i don't i don't know has has emma elizabeth tried to contact her parents i imagine she pretty much just left a note like (laughs) oh like she she made her parents aware that she was leaving for a while and it wasn't her fault but beyond that, no, she doesn't want to bring them into this at all. Okay, okay, fair. Yeah, and and you haven't heard anything. Like no, so. no information has definitely. Yeah, like, nothing has come to you. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, so I mean, you have, you have a vague idea. You don't have an address. You don't have a map. You just know, an arena somewhere in the ruined expanses outside of the marquee district so it's a relatively big area how are you planning to go about trying to find this arena geographically what are the districts that like border the marquee um i would have to double check a map uh and the ruined expanses are quite large in and around any area um, let me just pull this up. I've got Saturn. This first time around, we went to the Marquis District. Lucky couldn't even step on off a train before he had even done anything illegal uh, before he got stopped. So that might not be the safest uh, approach route, even if it is the most direct. Sure. Yeah. So, um, so the Marquis District is it's not it's not in the center of the city. It's sort of in the northeast. Um, but the closest districts would be the Topiary District is to the north. Uh, Lower Taverswood is to the northwest. The Reinvention is to the northeast of it, sort of off of this uh, this little peninsula that juts out to the Fade and the Abstraction. Uh, and the Strange Glass District is to the southeast. Uh, the Brick House is to the southwest, but it's pretty far away. The Hollows is west of it, but again, pretty far away. Uh, on the other side of the Quiet Lake. Um, so like the Quiet Lake sort of sits in the middle. There's the river that flows out through the Hollows. Uh, and the river that flows south out to the Alone and through River River. Um, so if you're looking overland, the Topiary District is the absolute closest, and it's to the north. Thoughts? I feel like that might be the better. Might as well leave it from there. The less time in the ruined expanses, the better. Yeah, and okay. like there, there are there are, there are some paths uh, through the ruined expanses. Um, these paths that cut between a some of it's so that reclamation work can happen, um, but those paths are maintained, uh, like clear and somewhat. I wouldn't say safe, but you know they are patrolled regularly by the pristine guard. Great. Are there any towers in the topiary district, like near the edge? Uh, that's, you know, that's a good question. Uh, why don't we ask the sooth cards to see? We have played the devil, (laughs) whose value value is zero uh, and is the nemesis. Uh, Temptation lies. Um, So, let's see. 
these are hurting birds. Uh, you know, there is. There is a tower uh, on the outskirts of the Topiary District um, that you have heard about. Uh, and it is known as the Tower of Glass Stars. Well, now I'm scared of it. Coming in with a zero value sooth card. Well, Emma Elizabeth doesn't know that. <laughs> that's true, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, Alex, am scared of it. Yeah, so so that's definitely, it. it's the only tower you know of on the sort of southern edge of the Topiary District that is relatively tall. Actually, it is quite tall. Uh, has Emma Elizabeth told any of us about this very tall, wonderful, totally not a trap tower? I mean, I imagine so, because like they're all planning on going to the same place, and no one can really get to the red without me bringing my right, 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 right hitchhiking right. friend with me. So, yeah. So, so do you all convene perhaps in Sewer Temple Library? Yeah. Does Emma, yeah. Emma Elizabeth throw up the bat signal and something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Summon a bunch of spirits to go find people and like tell them to meet. Seems like her. Yeah, pretty okay. much. All right. I assume you brought us here because you have a plan. No, Lucky, I brought you here for your wonderful presence. Yes, I have a plan. If we're going to this arena, it's not going to be a good idea necessarily to cross through the Marquis District given the amount of guards there. So maybe we should go through the Topiary District and conveniently there's a tower by the border that we might be able to hopefully get a view of whatever godforsaken place we're going to. It's a good idea. I guess we should go check it out, right? Sure. Do you know how to get there through here, or? Is that possible? Uh, so you would have to, I mean, you'd have to take the train again, unless you want to cross okay. the ruined expanses, right? Because the you're in the cloister district. Cool. So four wanted people get on a train. Right. <laughs> Oh, it's okay, because uh, I brought some stuff, and Henry just pulls out. Um, she's got a, a bag of various, like, outfits and gadgets for disguising, because I have a skill point in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Are you going to disguise everybody, then? Yeah, I'm going to disguise everyone. <laughs> try to, like, hide their, you know, try to inconspicuously hide everyone's, like, faces or other discerning features okay so uh why don't why don't we find out a little bit about these disguises what you disguise everybody like and uh and we'll see how that goes um let's see i think i want to disguise lucky as um maybe an older homeless gentleman <laughs> So okay. like the clothes are like perhaps more ripped up than Lucky would normally wear. Uh, he got him a big like, um, like floppy, like what do you call him? Like news, newsboy like, cap. cap. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's something. Tucked his hair or like kind of pulled some of his hair like forward into the cap to make it look a little bit more frizzed uh let's see alice oh dear alice your hair it's mm. beautiful and uh probably pack it in voluptuous yeah so mm. she's got this uh gigantic um headband <laughs> and she's just trying to like shove it <laughs> over the giant fro. <laughs> this 
sort of tame it and then maybe like pull it into like pigtails. <laughs> <laughs> so there's just like <laughs> and there's uh, no disguising that. <laughs> there's no disguising that. I'll probably throw a big scarf around your neck and maybe some some big old like aviator sunglasses. Mm-hmm. Do you have any hair dye? I could could I get hair dye? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, so it, in Saturine, it, chances are it would be done magically as a service. Uh, you could buy um, you could probably buy a, either a kindled item that do it would do it, or more uh, more likely would be that you would buy some sort of ephemeral object. Uh, essentially like a potion right like an alchemical uh, yeah. ingredient that would do it uh, and it would last like a very long time mm. okay mm. i don't know where to get one of those <laughs> oh they, it'd be like probably like the changeries sell them as like a minor you know thing to do uh the changeries themselves could do uh, relatively minor minor changes uh, mm-hmm. to that sort of thing for a fairly low amount of money. We can maybe pick up a potion on the way over and dye my hair black or something just for for this trip. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I like this headband though, and I haven't done pigtails before, so I'm excited. I feel like this could almost be weaponized if you really think about it. I agree, absolutely. <laughs> Cool. Alice is disguised up and ready to go. Beautiful. Uh, Now, Emma, I wasn't really sure what to do uh, for you that wouldn't uh, maybe be insulting, but I think you need to look like you have less money. (laughs) That's fair. Right now, you look like you Wait. have money, and I think Wait, you- even even after weeks in the sewer, she looks like she has money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The sewer has not broken her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think uh, we're just gonna throw a bunch of um, various sized jackets. <laughs> <laughs> just layers and layers. Just of lots jackets. of layers. Mm-hmm. Uh, to make Emma look like uh, one of the crazy, uh, crazy cat ladies. Okay. Oh, can I can I summon um, old Mr. Faust, who's a yes. of course. terrible, ragged little monster of a cat? Perfect. So Absolutely. I will summon old Mr. Faust, and he will complete my disguise. Perfect. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We look great. No one's gonna know. No, no one, no one is gonna know at all that anything is uh, is wrong. Uh, so yes, uh, uh, a hair color change, a permanent hair color change. I just want temporary. Okay. So, so the changery would do a permanent one uh, for a mage coin, uh, and uh, but yeah. So let's say like a kindled item uh, that that changes your hair uh, temporarily, and you know, let's say fifty orbs. Okay, Alice can afford that. Um, can it specifically be obsidian colored? absolutely absolutely uh and because it's a kindled object so it's like the most hair dye that ever hair dyed uh (laughs) it turns uh the strands like it doesn't turn them into obsidian um but it's it's obsidian so it sort of like refracts and like you know it it it's got that that glossy um mineral uh shine to it Uh, it almost looks like there's like crushed up obsidian in your strands of hair. Sweet. In your pigtails. In the pigtails. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, and yeah, so of course you can also uh, all take the train uh, to across Saturn. It is important to remember that that does actually cost you money. It's not free because it's Saturn. It's not exactly a socialist worker's paradise. That's fine. The train is pretty inexpensive, right? Uh, yeah. So, like, uh, rail tickets to go further out of Indigo are more expensive, but basically anywhere in Saturn is, a, is like, five crystal orbs. I'll cover it. So that would be 20 for all of us? 20 for all of you. That's correct. Oh, yeah, I'll cover it. Okay. All right. Uh, so you get to the Topiary District. Uh, Lucky has spent some time here. So the Topiary District is full of parks and trees, some of which move. Uh, and uh, most of the houses that are here, which is relatively small. This is mostly sort of like public green space, essentially. Um, the houses are grown uh, and formed like topiary. So people like form trees into like, you know, groves of trees into fantastic shapes. And, and those are the houses. Uh, and there's also buildings made out of sort of like folded origami paper and buildings that kind of float like balloons. Like they're just like tied to the ground and, and float and drift in the, in the breeze. Uh, and as you're, Walking to the glass, uh, the Tower of Glass stars, uh, you're going down a street known as Goldfish Avenue that is known for this because underneath your feet as you're walking, it's like you're walking on a koi pond as just the all these like fish sort of swim through the stone. It's not glass. Um, and uh, and they're swimming, swimming around underneath your feet. Uh, and periodically one sort of comes up and you can swear you feel like a little nibble on the bottom of the soles of your feet as you're, as you're walking. Oh, this is so delightful. I wish uh, we were coming here for better circumstances. I'm going to have to come back here. Should make a day trip of it, right? Right, everyone? Day trip? Yeah, as long as we survive this. Exactly. We'll be fine. <laughs> and there is indeed a tower sort of at the end of the avenue. So the avenue sort of runs directly to it. Uh, and it appears to be a tall spun glass tower. But as you get closer, that glass that's like spun and twisted, rising up several hundred feet into the air actually appear to be trees made of glass. Uh, the boughs spread out delicately hanging over other buildings and hanging off of them are tiny glittering glass stars, almost like Christmas tree ornaments, um, but much finer and more delicate. And they just sort of tinkle, uh, no, twinkle uh, in the sunlight. Uh, and then the closer and closer you get as you go underneath the boughs, the sort of sun overhead kind of fades out as the sky kind of goes dark and it is like you were under a night sky just with all these stars spread across the black velvet expanse. Why are we here? <laughs> <laughs> there is a door. Uh, and what is there, it like? It does it? Can we tell what it is? Is it's not just a viewing tower, surely? It's it's this big tall tower. Uh, as you walk underneath it, it has this effect of turning it into a night sky. It was it was bright daylight until you stepped underneath the boughs, uh, and there is indeed a door. There appears to be a line, a small line of people waiting to gain admittance, and there is a booth that appears to be some kind of ticket taker. <laughs> okay, it's the poorest attraction. 
<laughs> Perfect. We'll blend right in. Uh, I'll go see how much tickets are. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the ticket taker is in sort of a little uniform, uh, and he just says, "Oh, hello there. Looking to enter the tower." Oh yes. Uh, how much are tickets? There are four of us. Ah, uh, well, it is a uh, uh, ten crystals a uh, person. Oh yeah. We'll totally do that. Are there, um, so is it more of a self-guided tour or uh, will, there, will there be someone to give us a... Uh... No, no, of course. You're, you're free to wander through the tower. Uh, the best views are off of the top and uh, there are periodic shows that run through showing the starscapes under all of the suns of the actuality. Oh, that sounds positively delightful. <laughs> Thank you so much for your help. Take the tickets, give them money, and go back. You just cut everybody in line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like. <laughs> yeah, there's there's definite grumbling. Who is this people, woman? <laughs> people are like, Who are these people? I've been yeah. waiting in line all day. My feet are sore. And what here come four homeless looking. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Hello, 40 crystal orbs, we're ready. <laughs> yeah. yeah, who hand over money? So then everybody's like, oh, they're Vizlay, of course. Mm -hmm. So, I got us some tickets. We can just, uh, we can just go on in. There's a... Uh... What? what is it? Oh, you know, it's, I don't know, some diorama stuff on the, all the suns and good views. It's all we'll self-guided. Like an astronomy museum? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Let's go in. I'm also cutting through. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse us. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so as you wander through the tower, it is indeed uh, uh, like on the inside, it's somewhat building like, uh, but everything is made of this very fine uh, spun glass that you know when you look at it has the texture of like tree bark and leaves and things like that and the stars you can still see glittering from overhead um, but as you move around the tower the starscape seems to subtly shift and take on different properties uh, as you sort of move up these staircases and out onto these small platforms that are coming off of it like these large tree branches um, there's, you know, some signage, but they are essentially the starscapes as seen under different suns. So you move through, uh, and as you are moving through, uh, the path, let me just see here one second. So you start out in the gold sun. And all of you have an intuitive sense. And so you start out in the gold sun and then wandering the next one is the red. And you realize that this is the path of suns in reverse, which is the night side path through the suns. Instead of starting at silver, which is normally the first way to move through the suns. Would that mean anything significant to us? Like, is this... Well, so that so the the night like, side. I don't know what that means. So the, <laughs> it's spooky. Yeah, so the the night side path. It's not necessarily evil, but it's the reverse, right? Uh, so sometimes you have to. Well, for instance, the sun ships never travel in the direction of the night side flow of magic. Uh, there is different currents of magic, and one of them is the night side current, but it's it's wrong. And our our paths of suns, uh, as we play through the cards, are always the correct way. Mm. 
Could Alice? <laughs> we came in the exit. <laughs> Could Alice attempt to um I want her to figure out some kind of information if like is this normal Visley museum sort of I don't know stuff to see things very like uh what's the word you know like when people make really shocking art installations is that right is right just being like you know edgy <laughs> <laughs> or is this like you know an actual bad thing i'm trying to figure out how to use my museum curator skill because <laughs> okay okay right 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 okay uh, so you're trying to decide whether this is like uh, intentionally laid out this way from mm -hmm. a like a museum or art perspective uh, yeah. versus it being something like actually magical. Yeah. In terms of the way you're moving through it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, let's say that this is a level. Uh, let's see this level of information. Uh, let's call this a level six challenge. Okay. Um, would this be intellect? This to... would be intellect. Yeah, you could spend Benny from intellect. Okay. And uh, I guess you're you've got what two levels of skill, right? Because this is your shadow yeah. skill. So yeah. yeah. So your venture starts out at two. Okay, I'll spend one Benny to bring it up to three. Okay. And, and so we'll... that reduces the challenge to three. So you only need to roll three or higher. I rolled a seven. Okay. Um, yeah, absolutely. This is, it is intentional, but it is yeah. not art. This actually, yeah, there is, there is, you can, you can just see that, that no one would do this for artistic purposes without also intentionally uh representing the flow hmm. so like even if an artist did it it still it, it would still have that kind of magical effect and i think as a vislay you really know that a non-vislay might not have that level of knowledge um and you know that traveling the nightside path can be dangerous. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think we're in a bit of a situation, not not a not a, a bad one per se, but I don't think this is, you know, to be taken lightly on behalf of whatever message this museum is trying to communicate this is a faux pas is what i'm getting at but we should also play a new sooth card since we have changed locations and we have played the hunter uh this is the adept notions cats clocks and wind Hunter is a lonely soul pursuing prey with dogged tenacity. This is the perfect card for one pursuing a goal. All right. Um, so the, you know, you started the first one was the the gold sun. Uh, the second one is the red. Stars as seen underneath the red uh, the red sun. Uh, do you go out onto the platform? yeah okay yeah. uh so when you step out onto the red platform the stars almost never cease to move the constellations above you are constantly in flux so like uh, it will form and it will and it will take a definitive shape for you know a few minutes or a few moments and then sort of melt away uh, you see constellations clashing into each other and forming new things. You see shooting stars 
as they fall out of the sky, but then new ones appear, birth above you. It's just constantly in flux and change. Um, but there is, a, I'd say, a little bit more destruction. So there is like a lot of stars that seem to fall out of the sky, but somehow it never runs out. There's always more there uh, to be to be born, to be destroyed, to change. Um, as you're peering out over the starscape, uh, I need you all please to make a resist defense roll uh, action. Uh, this is a level five effect and it is definitely magical. So you'll need more than one success. Uh, which pool can we spend Benny from for this? Uh, this is resist, so you can spend intellect. Uh, yeah. If you have a skill in resist, then you can start your venture off with that. Okay. All right, so let's go around. Uh, Lucky, what was your venture? Uh, I didn't add anything to it. Okay, so you don't. I don't, you don't, I don't have, have resist or anything. You don't have skill in resist. Okay, and nope. you didn't spend any Benny. No. All right, and what did you did you spend swordage? Because I did say this is magical, no. so you need multiple successes. So you need to be okay, rolling well two then dice. I guess I would have had to. I rolled two dice, so I okay. guess I yeah. Spent so you have to spend swordage. Sword okay, fine. One yeah. point in swordage. Um, I got a six and a zero. A six Ooh. and a zero, and the zero was on the magic dice. Uh, yes, it was. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he's getting the book. <laughs> Sam, what have you done? I don't know. <laughs> I, I did not, you know, get properly set up today. Normally I have all this stuff out. All right, so let's pull out the flux chart. Uh, and the first thing is, though, uh, that you, you take a point of anguish as this just constant swirling flux uh, gives you, you want to puke <laughs> yeah it gives, and gives you a splitting <laughs> headache um, and remember that when you have a point of anguish uh, it does impo impose a scourge on ah. all of your qualia pools i think that's something we forgot last time similarly a wound imposes a scourge on all of your certes so that means your relevant ventures start out at negative one okay uh, flex chart. I'm gonna spend one intellect to cancel that if that's. Yes, you can spend an intellect ban A to cancel it out. Um, and you can you can do that as well, Lucky, if you wish. Like I only you can have spend one an intellect. intellect. I only have one. I don't you, know if I should you, spend it or not. <laughs> well. It's up to you. you. You have two rest actions. I mean, starting out at negative one on all Yeah, of okay. Your... I may as well. Okay. Because yeah. your quality qualier includes sorcery, right? So. Yeah. Uh, and your flex is that you are going to have a splitting headache for the rest of the day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And so, Alice, I'm assuming you also failed. Yeah, I was rolled a nine and a two. A nine and a two. Okay, so yeah, so you again this overwhelming sense, uh, but you do sort of reach deep inside yourself and spend that intellect to cancel out the anguish. Okay. Uh Henrietta. I used a sword ledge, um, and I rolled a four on my normal day and a six on my magic day. Okay, so you have one success and one failure. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so so you you fail. So you also take an anguish. You can again, you can spend an intellect benny to cancel it out. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. And Emma Elizabeth, I had a venture of two uh, from my cat who gives me intellect benny. Um, and I rolled a nine and a four, so uh, eleven and <laughs> six total. Okay, yeah. So you spent two because you, your yes. cat gives you two bene, but then you have to spend yes. them. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. All right. So yeah. So you spent two bene to and yeah. one sword. And I village. spent a sword village, like yeah. I gave you two members, but I, in case. Okay. All right. So padding uh your familiar sort of soothing your mind and giving you this extra little resource of intellect uh to spend you folk you focus and sort of focus through and you see the stars sort of temporarily merge and form this line that sort of like streaks across the sky and you can see because you hadn't been able to see the city right you're in this like almost other place but now you can see through the blackness and see the city beyond it. You can see the ruined expanses spread out. And you see these stars all line up from where you are and go in a straight path through the ruined expanses. And then, you know, they sort of follow after each other until they swirl momentarily in a circle above uh, a landmark that you can point, you can see in the ruined expanses. Um, so you can see what looks like a relatively large building with a tall, almost like obelisk type tower standing beside it. Uh, and this area of the ruined expanses is aptly named. Uh, some areas of the ruined expanses are essentially just abandoned, but this is a place that saw heavy, heavy damage during the war. Uh, so, you know, if you picture those like really like post post bombing campaign you know second world war continental europe european cities that are just like bombed out like just piles of rubble and like the occasional like shell of a of a building it's like that like it's seeing really really heavy damage can i tell about how far it is uh it looks like it would be you know like a few hours basically to get to could be worse And then it's sort of like, you know, the stars go back to just this like swirling uh, pattern. Can we leave from this area somehow? You can You can basically just walk out of the topiary district. Like, the no, sorry, edge... I meant like, can we leave within this like display? Alice? Like get to the red from here? Yeah, we're kind of in a simulation of the red right now. I mean, if you wish hard enough for anything, it'll probably happen. That's a really sweet sentiment, but um, perhaps not what we should put all of our uh, money on right now. Well, um, I'm not exactly sure how we could do that right now. Yeah, at least not in the way that we need to. Um, Alice would like to start talking about the different parts of the museum though for the next half an hour so that she can use her entertain ability to give everyone a bene. <laughs> okay, uh, does that bene go to a specific pool or to one of their choice? It goes to the pool of their choice. Okay. Choice. So, so do you basically go out and like sort of finish walking through the museum, like walk through till you basically hit the silver, and then? I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, else would at least. Okay. Uh, so you do. So you get to the top. So the silver is at the like the top of the tree, uh, and kind of opens up onto the big platform on the top. Uh, and it's cold. When you step out, it's like bitingly cold. Uh, Emma, Elizabeth, and uh, uh, Henrietta feels familiar. And you can sort of see the vague outline of like snow-capped peaks that the stars, you know, coldly hang out over top. Uh, and, uh, and then there is indeed like a door on the top of this tower marked exit uh henry's gonna look at emma sort of fleetingly and say you know this this was a nice vacation i enjoyed this trip yeah me too mm. this was a vacation y'all took 
Yep. Oh. A while ago. Mm-hmm. It's nice. You would really like it there, Alice. Lots of uh, creators and crafters. Oh, I thought you meant to this tower. Oh, no, we went we went <laughs> to the silver. No, I've never been to this tower before. I see, I see, I see. <laughs> uh, well, do we want to take a, a look-see from up here? I think I know where we're going. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I think we're good. Excellent. Then why did we come here at all? Well, we paid. It was your plan. <laughs> I mean, look, we got out of the um, balcony, I guess, for the red, and look, Alice and just all kept walking. suffered. I mean, why do if you knew where we were going, why did we bother? Well, I I do because I. I saw in the red room thing. Oh. Yeah. And then Alice just, she was, she was talking about the museum. She seemed like she was having such a great time. Uh, and, you know, I, I, she just went up the stairs and I followed. You know, walking through the museum did make me feel a bit more refreshed, so. And who knows, maybe walking the actual path of suns on the way back down will be therapeutic in some way. That's a little superstitious. There's no superstition in the that face for. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe there is. There's probably superstition in the actuality. Didn't you just you just got affected somehow by whatever happened downstairs and you're telling me that it's unreasonable to believe that this structure could do something else? Fair enough. All I got was a shitty headache though. <laughs> I went to this museum and all I got was a shitty headache. <laughs> <laughs> that dry air. Went to this museum and all I got was a feeling of existential dread. Mm. <laughs> the stars crashed around me. <laughs> well, as you uh, reverse your path and exit through the gift shop, uh, <laughs> there is there is indeed t-shirts referring to splitting headaches. <laughs> Love it. Uh, but interestingly enough, most of the people coming through here seem unaffected um but most of the people coming through here are probably not his life in fact like the shirt that has a splitting headache also has like a small testament of sons like so the the hand <laughs> which all of you except for lucky has one of these on your person <laughs> at all times at all times <laughs> i have a really weird looking thing I don't like it at all. <laughs> Sorry, it, Monty Cook Games. It's really weird looking. <laughs> my head went to a different direction. I could get so, more specific about what I think it looks like, but I won't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll we'll not go there. <laughs> please, please. <laughs> I don't like it though. I don't like it. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, are you gonna head out to the ruined expanses? Yeah. Excellent. Here we go. All right, well, let's play a new Sooth card for that, is the Ruined Expanses. We had such a great time there the last time. That's so great. Indeed. Uh, well, so we've played the cat, uh, which is the companion of notions, uh, cats, clocks, and wind. Uh, and, uh, yes, yeah, one sometimes must act alone to succeed, uh, curiosity and cleverness, but be wary of taking them too far. Uh, let's see. Okay. Challenge may arise that involves both mental and physical dexterity. Uh. <laughs> All right, let's keep those in mind. Uh, so, so as you wander through the topiary district, 
uh, the trees eventually become sort of more and more dispersed, fewer in number. Uh, the buildings become fewer. Uh, and then almost like a wall, sort of just on one, like hugging the edge of the topiary, are ruined, abandoned buildings. Uh, they are gray. Uh, they, the windows stare out at you like empty eye sockets in a dark skull. Uh, and but you can see a bit of a rubble laden path that starts twisting its way through some of these buildings and out into the ruined expanses <sighs> well here we go again so as you step forth into the ruined expanses the sky seems to close in over you just this gray ashy low-hanging heavy sky only the weak very very weak filtered light comes through it's almost as if you have stepped into a cave underground uh, with just these bits of ruined buildings rising beside you like cave walls and this narrow path twisting through but in the distance over the heap of rubble emma elizabeth you can see this obelisk Interestingly enough, no one else can see this obelisk. God fucking damn it, because I was just going to say that I pointed out. And I mean, yeah, so you point, yeah. and so everyone see Emma Elizabeth is pointing, but all you can see is like a blank slate sky. Yeah, so it's really far away. We get it. <laughs> it no, not that far away. Probably two hours, three hours left. I mean, far away. I don't like walking this distance, but there it is. There what is? The tower? Unless it's made out of clouds, I see no tower of any kind. Do you see a tower? <sighs> well, if you lead us there, maybe it'll make itself known to the rest of us yeah let's hope so otherwise this will be a really awkward trip <laughs> alice you notice a small glass sphere sort of about the size of like a baseball uh glittering just like tucked under a bit of rubble like it's just rolled there it just catches your eyes light this weak light sort of just glints off it at just the right angle for you to see Ooh, shiny and i also walk over <laughs> and you pick up this glass sphere uh and you're very good at identifying ephemera objects correct as a maker uh da, 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 da. i can check i think i think the ability is thought it was just for ingredients. Uh, I oh, here. maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's just for identifying ingredients and how to, like, store them and stuff. Okay. Well, you can you can tell this is an ephemera object. Actually, I think Vizlay can just... You can tell it's an ephemera object, and when you pick them up, you oh. can sort of sense what they do. Uh, so, so this is a bonus ephemera object for you, so it doesn't count towards your limit. This is from Anders' 500-bit... Uh, uh, donation to the channel. Thank you very much. Uh, coadunating mist. So C O A D U N A T I N G. Coadunating mist. Uh, so you can look it up. It is in the document. Uh, glass okay. sphere. Um, the gas, when released, when the sphere shatters, joins every solid thing that it touches into a horrific congealed mass. The gas cloud fills a small area. Objects are ruined and creatures are slain. Oh. <laughs> wow. Ultimate. That's pretty hardcore. <laughs> that is really hardcore. Does anyone want these m weird misty mists? Definitely. <laughs> okay. Give me a lucky. I trust you with this. 
what was it called? <laughs> is it uh, in the? It is coadinating mist. I'll, I'll type it in our. I don't it know. doesn't sound good either. So I've typed it in there. Okay. Okay, thanks. No problem. <sighs> Open that. Uh, to remind you that, uh, no. what was it? A it's small it. area? A small area. Sorry, it's not in the thing we have. Uh, it should be. At least it's not coming up. Yep. Uh, On page 257. Okay. Try that. In case I typed it wrong. Well, I couldn't even find the word mists for some reason. I don't know what's going on, so. Uh, anyway. Yeah, do you, are you searching in a Google Doc or do you have it downloaded as a Word Doc? No, it's Google Docs because I don't have any Word programs. Anyway, I'll, yeah, I'll find it. Okay, because yeah, I don't that tells not to me. load all the way. I just put it in the chat. Oh, I've had it open for like an hour, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, not happening. So. Okay. All right. Thanks, Corey. That was helpful. Um, as we're entering, I'm going to excuse myself around a building to Sorry. throw up. Okay. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to vomit an assistant. Okay, excellent. Uh, so why don't you tell us what this, well, not what it sounds like, because everyone hears that, and we all know it sounds like a cat yeah. uh, hawking up a Actually, hairball. No. this one is one that grows to be about my size. Okay, so so let's let's describe this process. I'm okay, assuming it's not well, your size when it comes out. <laughs> so no, it's not. It quickly grows, so it uh -huh. comes out like maybe kitten sized, mm -hmm. probably smaller. Uh, yeah, and the jaw unhinges. It's really gross. You hear like really gross gagging, like wet gagging around the corner. And uh, the ability is, I have vomit forth a creature that quickly grows to about my size. It's level three and does as I command. Takes no offensive actions, but as long as it's near, it grants me plus one to all physical actions. And um, I'm really sorry for this, everyone, but if you've seen Full Metal Alchemist, the <laughs> chimera, the dog child chimera, <laughs> That's uh, that's what's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, no. And Sorry. I mean, it, it essentially like except as tall as you, <laughs> so, yeah, like real big. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's got like a weird. It's still like, you know, got human humanoid limbs, but maybe a longish snout sort of face. Mm -hmm. Um. Perhaps. And it like it squirms its way up from your gullet, like yeah. wriggling its way out your throat. It sort of like you know bulges and distends as you're yeah. around the corner, uh, and like you know its hands actually come out to sort of like pull itself out of your mouth as it plops in this acidic pool. Yeah, uh, and it's it's then like you know those like foam like those eggs with like the foam dinosaurs and you put them in water and they, <laughs> yeah. So it, you know, it plops out um, and it's, it's flesh sort of ripples and you can hear sort of like breaking bones as they like <sighs> reform as it grows uh, until it like stands off wiping this like slime off of its furry pelt. <sighs> well, Oh dear. Good morning, Sunshine. <laughs> sunshine? Is that my name, ma'am? Um, it could be. Do you prefer to be called something else? Sunshine is fine, ma'am, if that is what you prefer. Oh, sunshine is lovely. Uh, yes, yeah, so, dear Sunshine, um, we are here in the Ruined Expanse to get a pathway to the red, and what I would love for you to do is just keep an eye out for 
anything suspicious that might do us any harm and let us know about it. Could you do that for me? Can do, ma'am. Thank you. All right. He sort of stands like just slightly behind and to the side of you, sort of like just off of your elbow, ready to offer assistance at a moment's notice. Love it. All right, let's go. Let's go. I like that his, maybe his up. fur, when he comes out, like ripples and sort of does that, like, you know, like pixel switching sort of mm. effect as the mm -hmm. fur ripples and then like reforms into like almost like a butler's uniform. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. Oh, but he still so stinks. Excited. Oh, yeah, really bad. Of bile and blood and vomit. Yep. All right. <laughs> that's all right spent stuff we're all good okay all right and you continue on your way as you get closer uh, everyone else can eventually start seeing a building like a large edifice sort of like the outside of a, of a sports stadium uh, becoming clearer, although you still can't see this obelisk that Emma Elizabeth uh, had mentioned and had pointed out. Um, and I just need... All right. Uh, as you sort of approach and the sky is dark and oppressive and bearing down on you, a crack of red lightning streaks across the sky, just rippling outwards, and then another and another as you get closer. And the cloud sort of boils as momentarily this large five pointed object descends over top of you until it is hanging in front of you and has the appearance of almost like a giant starfish uh it is you know 10 15 feet across uh from the end point of one arm to the other uh faintly undulating uh, and it has sort of in the center facing you this like twisted face peering out from the center of where its arms meet and its underside with this like clacking beak and these very human looking eyes, but they're quite large, easily the size of your fist uh, looking out at you. And... Uh, And it's just pops out. Ah, travelers, tell me, from where do you hail? Uh, hey, friends. We're we're from we're from here, Saturn. Where where are you from? You uh. You've been here before? <laughs> and uh, it, uh, yeah, you can see it, it has almost this, as it sort of like rotates around briefly to look, sort of on the back, you can see almost, almost like this brain-like structure sort of gently uh, pulsating. Uh, and sorry, it doesn't have a pair of eyes, just, just one. Um, Ah, I have been here through this place for some time. Yes, I'm learning much about this place. Perhaps you could tell me more. Where do you come from? Um, like, physically, existentially, metaphorically. <laughs> Let's start with physically first. Okay. Uh, well, I'm from Fartown originally. And it's sort of, it, it's uh, arms and like flesh sort of 
ripple almost with peristaltic motion that like radiates from the middle outwards down to the tips you can see these little fine hairs uh, that drift off of it moving around in an unseen breeze ah far town tell me are you visley uh yep yeah, we're vikings true <laughs> It drifts closer and one of its like kind of stubby triangular arms kind of like drifts out towards you, uh, you know, with these like little hair like protrusions wriggling off of it, uh, moving towards your face. And it just <laughs> says, may I? Uh, sh yeah, sure. <laughs> and it sort of just like cups the side of your head and these like hairs are like wriggling all over the side of your face sort of feeling around and it, Henry's eyes are just like this is fine it sort of drifts backwards and goes ah, that is an interesting defect thank you it is unique I have not encountered someone unable to say that word that so closely identifies so much about you Sorry, which word? We Isn't don't. It? We don't talk. No, 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 no. Don't. <laughs> don't. <laughs> There's nothing to say. Don't worry. Okay. I mean, I, it's, it's news to me. I thought it was perfectly. You know. I mean, we've all got our problems. I mean, <laughs> but defect is a harsh word. <laughs> <laughs> and. It sort of um, pops up and whirls, almost like it's lost interest, and swings over towards uh, Emma Elizabeth. Uh, and then it's looking at the demon behind you, and it goes, ah, is this one yours? Forgot about that. Temporarily. Interesting, and what's its name? To be quite honest, I don't really care to know. Um, so are you attempting to deceive it? Oh yeah, I wait. I do know this thing's name, don't I? Yeah, you, you do sure do. Name. <laughs> I sure do. Hold up. What's the thing? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Zeralax. Zeralax. All right, now. So. Our friend here, Zeralax. Oh, most interesting. And it drifts closer towards it. Where did you find it? I pulled it out of somebody. Ooh, out of someone who? I don't really know if I could. Well, there are a lot of them. Uh, a collective that goes by the name Sweets. I'm not sure if that's the host, the leader of the collective, or the collective itself. I'm still trying to figure it out, to be honest. It sort of ripples again. Ah, interesting. Sweets. Yes. And then it sort of shifts again sort of really suddenly like it almost goes from being like nearly still hovering to like facing in a different direction almost instantaneously uh, and it's now looking towards lucky i sense something different about you not like the others i'm the only male no no that's less interesting something more fundamental oh, that's interesting something deep-seated tell me these others have some connection some belonging to oh. other visle like them but you don't 
are you? That's an astute observation, I guess, but uh, I don't have anything to offer you. Hmm. Boring. That's uh, our need, guy. Boring all, as heck. <laughs> I need you all to make a resist uh, action, please. Uh, this is magical. You don't know the level of the effect. Mm. Uh, can I use counter spell? Uh, it is not a spell. Mm. Um, with adventure of one, I got seven and eight. Okay. Uh, also with adventure of one, I got um five and eight. Okay. Sam, no, Great. don't. Not only. Did I get another zero? But I also got another six. I rolled six and zero last time, and I rolled six and zero this time. Okay. And Emma Elizabeth? No. Uh, with adventure of three, I rolled a six and a eight. Okay, so everyone except Emma Elizabeth takes three points of mental damage. Oof. Uh, and three points of Damage rolls over to an anguish. I'm going to block that with intellect again. Okay. I won't because I'm out of intellect. <laughs> okay. Did you take a Benny from the entertainment? I did, but I didn't put it in intellect. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you have one anguish. So that'll be one scourge on all your certes pool. Yay. Remember that you can use your rest actions, right? You've got two rest actions to re recharge pools, or you can remove a injury, or sorry, a wound or uh, anguish with a with a rest action as well. Uh, and Henrietta, oh no, yeah, you took damage. I'm looking at the flex chart. Um, yeah. Wait, we flexed? Yes, because I got uh, a zero. Lucky, lucky oh. flexed. That's right. Yes. Do fluxes stack? Oh yes, absolutely. Some of them are like yeah. almost instantaneous, right? Um, I'm waiting to see if I just die. <laughs> just, just die. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no. You need major flux for that. Okay. Uh, I think, actually, you need grand flux for that. Um, Yeah, so the so as you sort of like throw up this uh, mental uh, ward, this magical energy, uh, the you basically hear this uh, howling and chittering of rats, and just see like all of these creatures worm out of like all the crevices and things around you, and like bolt in all directions, running away from you. All right. From like a point centered on Lucky, and they just flee. This Oops. is minor flux, so like a lot of them are totally harmless. Well, there, Lucky, there was, the, there was the a glass object nearby shatters, and I was like, <laughs> oh, no. oh, oh my god, oh my god, you would have killed us all. <laughs> and now we'll spend the rest of the stream re-rolling our characters. Yes. All right. Uh, so so this starfish is there just like pulsating uh, and you can see it sort of swell a little bit as all of you have this like screeching uh, sound permeate through your brains. Uh, what do you do? Lovely. Hmm. Uh, this like watching. Actually, no. As all of the vermin in the area run from Lucky, I'm going to be like, oh, well, Lucky, we all knew you were repulsive, but even this is new. <laughs> As Lucky is... I'm sure you think that's really fucking clever. But... 
And we do play a new Sooth card here um, because people have taken damage and we've played the Endless Maze. Uh, magic of the Blue is enhanced. Oh, magic of the Red. Uh, magic of the Red is hindered. Uh, secrets. Ravens, Books, and Flame. All right, so what do you do? Lead the way, Emma. Kill the starfish thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> is it still? We're still, it? we're still there with it's it. It's there pulsing. What, what do you guys do? It's there pulsing. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was just casual about it. <laughs> <laughs> casual uh, pulsing. It, it is. <laughs> Something just happened. It is hanging in front of you. Uh, so, what do you do? Uh. Henry, in an attempt to hopefully not get us all killed, is going to uh, just casually back up and say, well, this has been a lovely time, but we must get going. <laughs> if you don't, uh, ex please excuse us. <laughs> and where are you going? Uh, it drifts closer again. Um, You know, we're just... Uh, Going on a little walk. <laughs> <For> a walk. <laughs> Out for a walk. That sounds uninteresting. Where are you walking to out here in this place all alone? Well, we're not alone since we're all together. <laughs> <laughs> Pedantic arguments are boring as it pulses again i uh, need you all to make another uh resist roll <laughs> all right let's kill it <laughs> i i love and hate this thing at the same time i'm just gonna not use my sword religion fail because i want to save that precious resource okay oh, no there's all right so you take uh three points of mental damage I filled up my intellect, so I'm gonna do that again. I failed. Yeah, I'm out of intellect and sortilage, so. Okay, so three, so th three points. Another uh, anguish. Yep, so you're at negative two on your ventures that my involve God. Thalia. Well, how how is our like vision? Like, what does the the setting look like? Is can we see far away? There is there is like heaps of rubble. Uh, yeah, because definitely like that building would be far away. Like the direction you're headed. Um, okay. There's a there's a horizon. There's like just bits and pieces of of buildings around you. But yeah, you can definitely see. I mean, it it's claustrophobic and oppressive because the sky seems really low. Yeah. Can um can we see beyond the like pulsing? Oh yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, a little bit worried about Lucky. I'm gonna walk over and say, um, Lucky, I think you're in trouble here. So, uh, I don't know. I I think your tail is a safer one than what we have right now. So I'm just gonna sort of. Oops, sorry. You're gonna go into that story now, and I'd like to use conflicting tails to push Lucky to safety. Um outside of this okay. if they're willing yeah if they're That's willing then, then you don't need to roll anything and you just do it okay so I'll spend my four sorcery and good to go okay where did you push me where did I go <laughs> I would have probably sent you closer to the obelisk which I can't see yeah the building oh, you can neither. see the building though okay okay yeah uh so and you said so far away up to far away it says a very long distance uh yes okay yeah so it's a up to about like 400 feet or so 150 meters okay yeah um, so a cup a couple of football fields basically closer okay. there's just like, be... there's just a swirl and like lucky goes <laughs> 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 all right uh emma elizabeth uh did you succeed fail on the previous uh resist roll i'm fucking sick of that. i'm sorry i got distracted watching everybody else <laughs> if 
you don't roll, then you can't fail. Right, yeah. Uh, with a venture of only one now that we reckon had to do this again, I rolled a six and a seven. Uh, six and a seven. Uh, so you take uh, three points. Son of a of, bitch. You take three points, which uh, will roll over to a anguish unless mm -hmm. you have intellect to spend. Now I spent my last one on the Bene. All right. Fuck. So it is still there hovering and pulsing. Uh, we'll play a new card. And by the way, thank you, Smokebeard, uh, for the donation to CrowdRise a little while ago. Which may or may not be responsible for um, some of the trouble we find ourselves in. Uh, so we've played the Misremembered Dream. Uh, again, Magic of the Blue is enhanced, Red is hindered. And so as it pulses there, badgering you with questions, what do you do? Lucky's been teleported away. Can we touch this thing? Is uh, it poten potentially, yeah. It's not it's not hovering too far off the ground. What do you what do you want to do? I want to run up and high five it into another story. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna say that this will involve like Alice needs to jump, uh, and it won't be uh, uh, trivial to touch it. But the way this will work is based on its like level and defenses, basically, to touch it. Okay. Um, just because you have to like jump up and and uh, do it. Yeah. All right. Uh, so this this will be a um, yeah this will this will be a uh, what is it a physicality is what you can spend from. Hmm. Mm. Would I be able to like as Alice is running, sort of go over to like a pile of rubble and then like climb up it like a cat kind of and like jump off of it <laughs> uh so so usually in sort of like a round you can basically move a fairly short you know like three meters mm. uh oh. yeah but uh but there's probably some stuff nearby that you can you can get a bit of a boost off of so i'll treat that as an asset so that'll add one to your venture okay um okay sure yeah yeah um uh, okay, and then I'll use one physicality penne, and let's roll this dice. I rolled a three. You rolled a three, yeah. So you jump up, hand going to like try and hit this thing, and it's uh, it's sort of drifting out of reach. How far is nearby? Uh, near or nearby uh, is within between 3 and 15 meters. So it could be anywhere from about 9 feet to 45 feet. Is this thing within 45 feet-ish? Absolutely. <laughs> I don't try and put it in the fucking box. Let's go. Yay. All right, you're gonna try and cage it, and yeah. Uh, all right, so how much sorcery are you spending? What level of effect are you going for here? You know it's pretty high based on what you've been rolling. I know it's pretty succeed. high, but I don't think it's impossible. No. Well, no, I'm just saying, like based on the numbers that I have, I don't think it's yeah. impossible for me. Um, I mean, fuck it, I'm just gonna go with all eleven. Okay. So you yeah. spend eleven sorcery, uh, yes. and re and sort of reach out, and there is a slurping sound as the creature is sucked into your cage. All right. Whoa.
We'll have to figure out how to deal with this later. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I don't know if it was necessarily like evil. It was just sort of a pain in the ass. <laughs> if I can, I would love to just let it go and not interfere anymore. Mm-hmm. Let it go in the but- guard place. No, Alice, I wasn't really what I was thinking when I said that. Okay. Um, I sent Lucky not too far away. We should probably go uh, meet up with him. Mm-hmm. Come on. I honestly thought that Emma Elizabeth was just going to sit there again through another like dangerous encounter where Emma Elizabeth yeah. just like, I don't know, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. All right, so yes, you catch up to Lucky, uh, and after a little bit more travel, find yourself on the outside of an imposing concrete edifice. Uh, it basically looks kind of like a modern sports stadium, uh, crossed with like the old uh, Roman Colosseum. Uh, you know, it it rises up almost perfectly smooth on the outside with you know some columns and things like that, uh, and there is definitely multiple entrances that lead into the uh, the arena but you all notice as you look at the arena that it seems to subtly flicker across its smooth concrete surface are periodic flashes of like black and white and gray almost like falling snow or like the static on a dead television channel and that's where we're going to take our break for tonight so we will return uh in about five minutes folks uh five or ten minutes or less uh as we uh, go be human for a moment and uh, refresh ourselves so stick around and uh, if you want to throw more interesting curveballs at these folks Definitely uh, donate to CrowdRise, and uh, we'll be right back.
All right, folks, welcome back uh, as we return for the last bit of our Invisible Sun stream. Uh, and a reminder, as always, that we are fundraising as part of Radio Free Wolf uh, tonight. Uh, donations to CrowdRise, which I will post the link in chat once again. Uh, and all donations, $5 and above, I will translate into the sort of bit equivalents that I've got posted up here on the overlay that you can donate bits to as well to influence the game with Ephemera, Sooth Card Draws, and, uh, and GM Shifts. And thanks to everyone who has donated money so far tonight. Uh, we have put that to good use so far with a bonus Ephemera object and a GM Shift. And yes, all this money is going to the scholarship fund for Big Bad Con to help disadvantaged uh, folks get to cons easier, which is great. Uh, so we will play a new Sooth card because you've gotten to a new location as you're outside of the uh, arena. And we have played the Alchemist. Uh, the Alchemist is the Adept. So a reminder that the Adept uh, also triggers us to play another card on the next sun. Thank you very much, uh, Johnny B. Good 82 for the subscription. So let us play another card as we play on the gold, the Weeping Priest. Uh, this is the apprentice. Uh, so everyone's ventures are currently at minus one because we've played the apprentice. That's on top of anything from yeah. uh, scourges that you have currently. Uh, betrayal, weakness, turnabout, disillusionment, and loss. The priest sits alone, filled with sadness or remorse. What is causing his misery? The apprentice of secrets. Um, all right. So as you stand outside the edifice of this building that is flickering like snow or static running across its surface, and you can see sitting above the entryway a single raven perched on top of the entrance. Just a single raven, not, not an unkindness of ravens. Uh, and it is pecking sort of above the entrance somehow this is more uh imposing and intimidating than the horde we ran into the other night <laughs> and the raven sort of just cocks its head one beady black eye focused on you on the street below. What do you do? I'm gonna rest for 10 minutes. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> All right, so you sit, you sit outside the arena, sitting on top of the rubble uh, and, uh, and take a, a breather so you can go ahead and use uh, one of your 10 minute Use your 10 minute rest action. Recovery. Do some stretches. Oof. Get that sorcery moving. <laughs> I'm not taking a rest. I don't know what I'm doing while they rest, but I'm not gonna all right so you're not gonna you're not gonna use your your rest action to clear any of your no. anguish i'm just gonna see what happens <laughs> wow okay all right i can always rest at a later date it doesn't have to be I mean, yeah not you're dead, dead, I guess. <laughs> can rest when you're dead <laughs> <laughs> literally okay all right, so your 10 minutes pass. You're outside of this arena, and uh, what do you do? The raven is still there. Let's head on in. 
I was just going to walk yeah. into the arena. And sort of as you get close to the threshold, the raven ruffles its feathers and sort of takes off into the gray sky. So you pass underneath the concourse into the cool darkness, uh, and and it is indeed dark. Only weak light sort of filters in through the entryway. What do you do? I'm going to turn around to the demon we got. All right, Zeralax, you're up. What happens now? We're at your arena. I agreed to unlock the gate. I can sense it. It is deeper inside. It sort of points. I guess I'll go in that direction, wherever that is. Okay. So it is dark. You can't see. Okay. Hold so on. What do you, I think what do you I have do? something for that. Uh, I it. Oh, oh, I was going to say, uh, what level of effect would it be to make a little like ice ball of light by weaving winter pretty, and moonlight together? Pretty trivial. Um... So, I, think, I don't think it says specifically, but basically the equivalent of just like a globe of, of weak light um, is probably only like a level one effect. Do that. Okay. All right, so you spend one sorcery and weave those threads of magic together and a cold bluish white light sort of radiates out through. Uh, and you can see there's sort of a short concourse uh, and it appears to go into like an actual like this is sort of like the outside almost of like a football stadium right it leads into an inside that's presumably open well let's hope there aren't any more weird story hungry tentacle monsters or crazy cat wielding ladies or whatever else is in here let's go so as you push your way deeper inside uh the arena in towards the center you start to hear sounds you hear voices noises uh cheering oh thank you very much other doc for the raid very much appreciated uh, and uh, a reminder to everyone uh, that we are raising money tonight uh, for Radio Free Wolf to go to Big Bad Con Scholarship Fund. So anyone who makes any donations to the crowd rise, uh, we will convert that into our bit donation uh, triggers here that you can affect the game. So thank you very much. We greatly appreciate it. So yes, you can you can hear voices and talking and murmuring and snatches of music, but it all sounds kind of shallow. It sounds like uh you know you know when you put on a audio track from one of the many companies that provide audio to play in your tabletop games. And it's an <laughs> audio track titled like Cafe or you know medieval inn or whatever else and there's like murmuring and voices and whatever and it all sounds obviously fake that is like what you hear but it is like a, an arena version of that and i'll say that without calling out any particular company who provides such services which we appreciate um, but it sounds obviously fake sounds wrong uh, and as you continue to push your way in through, um, it, it's getting louder, as if it is all coming primarily from the inside portion of the arena. What do you do? 
do I get the sense that this is a naturally occurring fake magical soundtrack? <laughs> um I'm gonna say that the you know, if we work this out levels and your skill it's low enough that you don't need to make a roll, this does not appear to be a natural phenomenon. Okay. So someone set this up. Um I'm just gonna make sure my uh my sword is ready. <laughs> and I'm gonna squeeze Sunshine's hand extra close, like keep an eye out. He he squeezes back and you know his hand is is kind of soggy and uh damp. It's fine, it's just like a high school date. <laughs> I'm here for you, ma'am. Thank you. Let's uh, see if we can get to the bottom of this. Okay. So you push out through and eventually emerge out into the stands of this uh, stadium. And so the oppressive gray sky of the ruined expanses, you can see again above you, weak light filtering through. Uh, and most of the seats are sort of crumbled into ruin. But here and there, you then begin to see people. Flickering apparitions of people appear, but their forms are disrupted by static. As this sort of staticky snow, like on a television channel, sort of periodically blurs across their face. Um, again, these people look like an obvious lie they they look kind of solid but they look flat they look fake but they're moving and, and walking around like people um and they're filling the stands and cheering and you can see some sort of game being played on the field below uh and all of the players appear to be like running around the field but they have like broomsticks that they're straddling that they've got tucked under and they're and they're wearing uh like vests and things they seem to be chasing something and like throwing some balls but they're like running around uh and like pretending like they're flying uh, and you can see these like ring structures set up you all recognize that all of these things are shadows from the gray filling this stadium sorry henrietta loves harry potter yeah, she sure does. <laughs> so i feel like she should be like oh my god but you can see the lie of it yeah because this isn't this isn't even like um people in in our world like playing quidditch and they can't fly and so they're kind of pretending but at the same time they're not pretending because they can't fly this is like if you were watching the movie quidditch but all of the special effects were super obviously fake so it's like people almost like they're not running they're 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 moving across the ground with like their legs and stuff still but they're not flying just like everything seems fake and wrong uh turn to alice and ask her if we stumbled into a story uh this is not a story this is a cheap imitation of pulp fiction that we should not subject ourselves to it has an allure though you f you feel this like you're drawn to it even though it's so obviously fake it just it's kind of enthralling pulling at your attention uh i need you all to make a resist don't uh, say it <laughs> god fucking damn it <laughs> no uh, uh, oh. Sortilage for this, Dan. 
uh, the, this is most definitely a magical effect, so unless you're also using a spell or something, at the very least you need to spend sword elite. Well, I still don't have any sword allergy. I still need to use an action to refresh that pool. So. Okay. Alice, uh, what, was, what were your results? Alice is just going to be like, I don't need to resist these stories. I am above them. And just not even attempt uh, to do anything about it. She's just like, eh. eh. Okay. Okay. Let's see what happens. Uh, Henrietta. Yeah, I, ha I don't have any sword village to spend, so. Okay. I guess she's just enthralled. <laughs> All right. Emma Elizabeth. Uh, with a venture of three, I rolled an eight and a four, so 11 and seven. Okay. And Lucky? I rolled an eight and a nine, but I okay. think I have to subtract from them, don't, th don't I? Yes. Yes. Remember that you're. Yeah. So. So what's your. So what's your venture? So your venture starts at I, negative two because you've got a negative two. Okay. Uh, then score. it's just negative two. So. Okay. So I actually got six and seven. Okay. So. So despite your brain being like a your mind being sort of bleeding, open wounds, uh, you and Emma Elizabeth. Uh, are able to resist the effect. Alice and Henrietta are just frozen in place, locked and watching the events happening on the field. Alice and Henrietta, these become more and more real to you, more and more entertaining. And Lucky and Emma Elizabeth, you can see uh, Alice and Henrietta's forms becoming almost uh shadow like as you can see sort of they get diffuse around their edges they look less real less present uh and you see these little bits of like static flicker across their face what do you do <laughs> um uh, 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 let's see it's like a one person. And Emma Elizabeth, the the demon, uh, Zeralax, sort of like points to the sort of like the, you know, like the entrances, like where you run out onto the field. So like the far one. So like an mm -hmm. entryway at field level on the far side. And like where this stadium looked almost Roman Colosseum-esque on the outside, on the inside, it looks like a modern like American football stadium. And as you've stood here, you can see the lie of it, right? You can see that it's not quite right, but to Alice and Henrietta, it's looking more and more real by the minute. I'm going to use uh, the Raven soul <laughs> ephemera. Okay. And I'm going to, you create a visual illusion that fills a medium area. It has no other qualities and lasts as long as you do nothing but concentrate on it. And I'm going to attempt to create an illusion of the thing that I can feel like I know is real to mm -hmm. uh, Henry and Alice, which would be um, a long time ago when we did the, uh, uh, the, the, the mission where we, mission, uh, the, the session where we first met uh, Hiram uh, and Henry gave up a memory of them all sitting together at like a cafe, like actually enjoying each other's company. I'm going to mm -hmm. create one of those scenes. Okay. And how big of an area did you say this affects again? A medium area and is level oh. six. A medium area, level six. Okay. Yes. Um, so you're sort of like wrapping it around them, essentially. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And around all of you. Uh, so, so you do that. I'm going to treat this as a pretty big um, asset for Alice and Henrietta um, as the, yeah, this sort of shimmers into existence. And at least temporarily, while this is up, 
they sort of snap out of it. Um, and so you come back to yourselves, your forms kind of recompose themselves. You get more solid uh, as you see this scene unfolding around you of, uh, of the four of you in a coffee shop, uh, sitting around eating, drinking, and talking. Um, but you're totally aware of what's happened. You, your memories haven't changed or anything like that. Uh, what do you do? I thought we were in a stadium earlier. I think we're still in a stadium, but now there's a cafe. I don't remember this ever happening. We look happy here. This is an illusion. On the other side of it, there's another illusion that you and uh, Alice seemed quite taken with. And it seemed to be pulling you back into the gray. At least it seemed to be. Uh, I would really rather that didn't happen. So I pulled you back using this and we're going to have to cross the field to get where we need to go. So I'm going to... I can cover my eyes and just, you know, walk across that way. Yeah, yeah, if we don't have to resist it again. Yeah, we could try. And how, how long can you keep this? Uh, as long as up? I concentrate on it. Okay. Yeah. Well, then uh, by talking, are you still concentrating on it? Is talking concentrating? It's a, it's a thin line. I would say, like, okay. you're, what you're conveying to them is... Uh, like imagine you being super tired and having a few drinks and it's okay. all coming out a little disjointed. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Uh, well, how about uh, we somehow connect ourselves? Oh, we, Henry and I, maybe all four of us can close our eyes and I'll write a story where we just happily bump into the right door. Easy peasy. Yeah, it sounds super easy peasy. <laughs> Does anyone have a rope to connect us all? Or something? Oh, okay. we, could, we could tie all of the scars together. <gasps> Unless you have a rope. A rope would be also very useful. I'm going to wait until I drop the illusion to use this, but I have discarded candles in the dark. I can name a single mundane item that you can carry in one hand, and I can take it and put it in the hands of up to six other people as well within a short range. Could I create one rope that fits into everyone's hands simultaneously? Ooh. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. like, like a coil of rope, it won't yeah. be, you know, like a, so like what you could fit in one hand. So we'll say like, if you took a rope and sort of coiled it up and held it, right. So it's yeah. not just a short, tiny little thing, but yeah. you know, a couple of feet of rope a piece. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. So I guess I'll drop the illusion and uh, immediately create that rope. Okay. Alice is going to close her eyes. Okay. Uh, Henrietta, Lucky, Elizabeth. Um. Yeah, I guess Henry will also resolutely close her eyes, hold on to the rope, and also hold on to sunshine. Yeah, so you close your eyes and then the rope will appear in your hand. Uh, Lucky, what are you doing? Just walking. <laughs> so, when, I, I mean, when, when Emma Elizabeth drops the the illusion, are you taking any any precautions or anything? Or I mean, I, I don't feel like he would, but he probably should. I, I don't know. It, it's, um, totally, it's totally up to you. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like he would just trust in Alice to get us there. If she's writing the story, then it must be true. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's like 
I mean, I'm not sure if I know whether like he is is or isn't closing their eyes or no or doing anything. Okay, all right. Just, so Alice and Henrietta are just gonna okay. milk it. All right. Uh, so the illusion sort of drops around you, and again the crowd sound uh, swells in everything that's going on around. Uh, Emma Elizabeth casts this incantation. The rope sort of appears. And uh, Lucky and Emma Elizabeth, I need you to roll resist actions again. <laughs> I see that nervous grin on Sam's face. <laughs> I got uh, another flex. Oh <laughs> my god. I rolled a one and I have a negative two, so that makes it like a major zero. Okay. Uh so so you get you get locked in. So Lucky starts to get shadowy and diffuse and and everything uh is enthralled or Lucky is enthralled by the shadow. And Uh, the air around you drops precipitously or the temperature drops precipitously uh, like ice and like frost sort of appears on all the substances <laughs> around you uh, and Elizabeth what were your uh, results with a venture of two I rolled a nine and a five okay so so again you sort of you resist this um and so what are you what are you doing well i've got my eyes open and i think i'm the only one who does you is and lucky, lucky both do but lucky's now oh, enthralled yeah. and enraptured by is he in a physical form like okay can I, can I touch him yes yes he, he's he's <laughs> okay. he is becoming diffuse and he's mm. diffusing into the air around him but he still has some okay. solidity to him I'm going to tie a bit of rope around his wrist and then I'm just going to try and lead us across the, the, um, the field and just kind of tug him along and see what happens. It's the only thing I can think to do. Okay. So Emma Elizabeth is, is tugging along. Alice and Henrietta are stumbling blind. Uh, Lucky basically gets pulled off his feet. <laughs> uh to the to the ground um Zeralax is just following behind you he appears unaffected by this um and and lucky is getting dragged uh emma elizabeth as you basically draw drag people stumbling along i'm gonna need you this is this is a straight non-magical um but there's like a physicality challenge here to see how fast sure. how tiring this is all of that yeah. Scrawny little Emma Elizabeth uh, dragging yeah, right. three people around. <laughs> yeah, there's a cost for all of this resist succeeding. It's that I cannot do jack fucking shit. <laughs> um, so I'm, this is a difficult but not impossible challenge. Uh, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna set this at a five. So kind okay. of medium, but it's physicality, so you can spend Benny from your physicality gotcha. pool. Uh, are you gonna get Zeralax to help you? If I can. I don't know exactly what type of. I, His I, parameters are pretty broad, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. If I can get him to help, I definitely will. I'll put it that way. I'm not entirely sure if I can, but if I can, I will. Uh, let me just see here. Remember again. It wasn't. Was it aid? Yeah. Yeah, he's got to help you get to unlock the gate. So I think yeah. helping you across makes sense. Uh, so I'm going to give that that he's pretty strong. So that's an asset. Uh, so you're you'll get one to your venture from or two sure. to your venture actually from two. from his okay. Zeralex's help. Um, I will spend uh, one of my two physicality bene. All right. So venture uh -huh. three. So we only need two or above. 
Yes. Three. Okay. So with <laughs> Zeralax's help, you're pulling the three of, of them across uh, until you are standing outside this darkened, uh, you know, entrance onto the field that goes to a ramp that is leading down. And Zeralax just says, it is that. Is Lucky feeling any better? Uh, not quite yet. I can't do anything about it. Yeah. So. I'm going to keep pulling him down, see if I can't get him out of the area of effect and cleanse okay. him for a little bit, I guess. So as you pull everyone down into this tunnel, this ramp that is sloping downwards, cool darkness uh, around you, because uh, now you can't see as you're going down into the darkness, although Zeralax sort of takes the lead, because I think Zeralax can probably see. Um, yeah. Everything gets humid around you um and warmer as you are descending uh lucky you snap out of it probably after you have gone 50 meters or so uh down the the ramp and you're in pitch have, darkness like, crazy road rash or something <laughs> being drugged by a rope yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You should you should probably have um, a uh, not an injury, just a, a or sorry, not a wound, just a injury. Mark off an injury from just being like banged up. Did did we make it? Is it safe? We made it. Great. Good job, team. Nice. I'm exhausted. So what do you do? Well, I think we could probably keep on stumbling all the way up to the gate, I think. Mm-hmm. Okay. I have, a, I have a lantern in my inventory. I bought it a while ago with the hate sys money, so I'm just going to whip that out. Huh. Okay. All right, so you pull out, pull out a lantern, uh, and it's not like a gas; it's like an etheric lantern or whatever. So, you, like, you turn yeah. it on, it just draws power from the ether around it and sheds a ghostly light around you, uh, illuminating that the the stone corridor has snaking all across it, uh, ceiling, floor, walls, these dark black brownish gray uh growths tendrils that snake across sort of like roots like tree roots um you know brachiating out into fine patterns thinner and thinner projections that descend anchoring into the stone the concrete seems to be rotting around these growths uh, and in some places they're twisted and more tumorous And they seem to get thicker further down the tunnel. What do you do? Alice is going to pull out her sword just in case. She's going to reach into one of her pigtails and just be like, whoop. It's cool that you can still do that. You know, you probably don't need the pigtails anymore. I don't think anyone's going to find us down here. That's a good point. Um, I mean, if you want them, I think they look really nice, but, you know, I might be biased because I, I hmm. did it. Hmm. You do you. Let's, let's, let's keep the pigtails for a bit and see, see how it works. Sorry, is there anything in front of us? Well, the, the tunnel, the, the ramp, as far as you can see, cast by uh, the light from the lantern, continues to slope down. Uh, there's these growths, and, and then it's, you know, dark. You can't see all the way down the, the ramp or tunnel, and the growths seem, seem to get thicker, uh, deeper, you know, further into the tunnel that you go. You can hear scurrying behind you, 
and as you turn to look, uh, these sort of, uh, actually they, they look like uh, roach goblins. Uh, so they're sort of these rat-like, twisted humanoid creatures with hands. Um, and there is dozens of them, but they totally ignore you. They're just scurrying down the hall, scurrying down the ramp, but they're all holding squirming bits of flesh chunks still bleeding but still twitching uh in their paws their little human-like hands very raccoon-like uh as they like scuttle down ahead of you and disappear into the darkness okay that's really gross sort of one of the last ones which is going down sort of the runt at the back of the pack uh you can then see one of these tendrils off of the wall sort of lashes out, wraps around it, and then like yanks it into the wall and drags it into this like tumorous mass. Okay, so we're mm. avoiding those masses. If at all possible. Yeah, single file maybe down the down the path. Sounds like a good idea. So as you continue descending, it gets uh, warmer, more humid. Uh, steam is sort of hanging in the air. Uh, it's very, you can see uh, condensation glistening on these uh, tentacular projections uh, and dripping off the ceiling, pooling onto the floor in between these like root systems. And it then leads down into what appears to be some sort of cavernous space. The light sort of casts out, and you can see that it must be a large room that doesn't illuminate very deeply into it. And you can just hear this heavy, wet breathing from deep inside the chamber. Uh, hello. Is is there someone uh, inside that we should be aware of? We're just coming in to, to take a look at the gate. My name's Alice. This burbling sort of wet, phlegmy response comes back to you. <sighs> the mini come. One, use the gate. Uh, could, could this all the rat things conjoined into one? <laughs> well, you now see uh, empty handed uh, roach goblins kind of come out and they look at you sort of predatorily. But you can see they make a quick assessment and like flood past you, like give you a wide berth and go up the ramp. Can we tell if this is like, if these growths are all going back to this one creature? Well, they, they go, they dis they definitely disappear into this cavernous space. Okay. I'll respond back and say, um, uh, sorry, what did they say that they, they use the gate? Yeah, it says they make use of the gate. Okay, I'm going to, or Alice is going to say back, uh, we also need to make use of the gate. It's a part of our story, um, so that's going to be a requirement that we uh, come in and use it. All right, excellent. Uh, just a brief reminder to our viewers, you've been watching chat. Uh, about the fundraiser i'm going to post the link in there uh one more time going to a worthy cause and of course any donations five dollars or above are going to trigger something in the game potentially giving people an ephemera that might be useful in this situation one never knows turning a sooth card which reminds me we should play a new sooth card Let's see. definitely and this is the very first time we've made it around to the invisible sun. 
Mm. We play an Asus card on the Invisible Sun because we've been good about playing our cards. And we play the Looming Shade. Uh, uh, magic of the Grey is Enhanced. Uh, magic of the Indigo is Hindered. Mysteries, Rats, Mirrors, and Stone. Ghosts and Spirits lurking everywhere. Danger raises its head when this card is turned. Uh, Ken, that's a good question. How much to introduce Flux? I don't have that on there. Uh, I'm going to say if you want to introduce some minor flux, uh, five bucks, uh, ten bucks for uh, major flux, and uh, say uh, 50 or above would give grand flux, because grand flux gets nasty. Just kill us with grand flux. <laughs> there, I mean, there is literally like yeah. you die. Yeah. But given that I pick and don't roll i'm probably not just going to kill somebody with grand flux um, i'll do it for fifty dollars <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's other excellent stuff on there uh so yes and so and so this remind me again alice what did you ask <laughs> alice said she didn't ask <laughs> or what uh, did she say <laughs> what, did, what did she inform she said we're coming in we need to use the gates it's a part of our story so get ready basically <laughs> okay uh so michaela donated some bits and i said well we're keeping track and we'll convert some bits and turn them into a donation uh through variant rolls uh 500 bits is normally a bonus ephemera to a player so michaela if you want to post in chat which player you would like to give the bonus ephemera to I will draw that. Uh, so the voice Alice just comes out and it just says, What would you offer me for use of the gate? Actually, it doesn't say me. It says us. What would you offer us? I'll offer you a glimpse at your greatest desires a total ecstasy for whatever period that can conjure up okay excellent uh lucky you have a flash of inspiration and this one's from book m so it's not in the document so i'll have to read it to you but an incantation settles into your mind in this moment whispered as if from a thousand voices coming from behind or from a great distance. This I happen to pull. It's totally appropriate given the Seuss card that we played. This incantation is called Those Who Came Before Know the Best Paths. It is level four. When you use this, you conjure a ghost that appears next to a person you name within 20 miles and the ghost will lead them to your location even if you move. The person is under no compulsion to follow the ghost, and the ghost cannot speak or do anything other than beckon and lead. And it ends automatically when the ghost completes the task or when the sun next rises, whichever comes first. All right. That's pretty cool. Thank you very much. No problem. Yes, Ken, it could be a ghost girlfriend. <laughs> All right, uh, so Alice, you're offering them a glimpse of their greatest desire and a brief moment of ecstasy. Is that yep. it? Yep, yep. Okay. Um, so, uh, so what are you going to do? It seems to invite that and says, uh, this is tempting whether it is sufficient we will judge after okay i'm gonna start walking down and i'm gonna motion for the group to follow up if they're so inclined and once we get closer down um, i'm gonna use departure from reality on this demon thing Okay. Um, 
so yes so whatever this is so departure from reality what does that do and what does it look like yeah so my first question is this is a gray ability and gray is enhanced i forget what that does though uh, it adds one to your venture okay sweet. or or it can cost one less sorcery your choice mm, i'm gonna make it cost one less sorcery okay so i'll spend six sorcery uh, it says i affect one being within long range so that their perceptions are now under my control everything they see hear, touch taste and smell is what i want it to be and i'm going to show them this grand world of the red where all of these demons are a part of them and they have just consumed everything they have everyone's minds feeding back to theirs. I'm just going to make it as like vivid and detailed as I think a demon would want to experience to be satisfied. Perfect, perfect. And they're a willing creature, so you don't need to roll anything because this will so this will just happen. Uh, so as you go out in through the darkness, uh, Emma Elizabeth, because <laughs> you're the one with the light source, are you following in behind Alice to provide some light? I'm muted. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so, and Henrietta and Lucky, are you following? Yeah. Got my okay. sword out. <laughs> All right. So, so you, you begin to sort of have to like pick your way through these writhing root like tendrils uh, that are scattered thickly on the floor. They're pulsing faintly uh, as things seem to move through them. And as they get thicker, they twist and twine up into this bulbous mass of flesh rising in the center of the room. The same color, gray and brown, streaked through with like red pulsing veins, black veins. And it's twisted and misshapen. Uh, and periodically you can see stretching and pulling out and like re like forming out of this like protoplasmic pool and then sort of gooping back into the mass. Hands, faces, bits of features here and there uh, of different people. Uh, and you can see sticking out from sort of the side of it, this twisted, misshapen, reddish stone doorway that has been almost completely swallowed by this creature as your hand hits onto its flesh it sort of rises underneath and sort of almost like absorbs your hand into it a little bit not all the way not up to the wrist or anything just you know like halfway up your fingers and it quivers as you show it this story of what could be if it consumed everything and it it shivers and it shakes and it flinches back from your hand and you can hear this like sucking sound as these tendrils unhook and slither down from behind you and across the floor as they sort of suck back up into this body and it folds in on itself you can see bits of it twist and turn as it folds impossibly small in onto itself and there's a bright flash of light as it winks out and the gate kind of stands open momentarily and you can see this sort of shimmering reddish haze across it as it cracks and collapses and there is a ripping and tearing sound as in the middle of this chamber reality itself as if clawed fingers rip out from the other side stretch and twist it apart with this audible ripping sound as the grand flux of the spout fabric of space or time is permanently ripped asunder as a hole between indigo and the red where this gate was is ripped open permanently in this space 
uh, Zerlax behind you, his job no longer required, as the gate is permanently open, fades out. Fades into a spiritual form and returns to the red. Well, he doesn't have a long way to go now. Thanks, Ken. Hmm. <laughs> this can only mm. be bad. <laughs> what just happened? Did you just touch that monster to death, <laughs> Alice? They were so happy about my story, they died. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. <laughs> uh, oh no. <laughs> oh, um. We're going to get blamed for this. <laughs> <laughs> and not if people don't see us, and Alice is going <laughs> to. You just popped in. You just like jumped in and well, went. I yep. I don't want to. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Alice! Oh my God. And, Fine, and you I'm can gonna... bas- you can basically just see right. Like it's it's a hole. There's no haze across it. Um, like on the other side is this ever changing landscape. Um, the area that you're looking upon is sort of like blasted uh, reddish. Uh, hills like earth um there's a reddish sun uh, gazing it's casting its lurid light uh across the landscape um it's it's not a hellscape i'm not going to describe it that way it doesn't look like a traditional depiction of hell or anything like that um but it's constantly in flux um things are constantly being like formed and destroyed not necessarily like literally super fast before your eyes but you can tell that it is a state of constant change and there's definitely some twisted and misshapen creatures uh around you can see mm-hmm. drifting across the landscape and across the eye uh sky not eye um and alice as you sort of like jump into uh the like jump through the hole uh what does everybody else do i will go after alice immediately (laughs) yeah absolutely (laughs) Mm -hmm. emma elizabeth i will follow begrudgingly (laughs) emma elizabeth is just like fuck well we're supposed to go here aren't we i mean this is the whole plan it just you know not supposed to rip a hole in the fabric of the universe. It's just a little hole. <laughs> uh, so as you all step through, uh, everything everything sort of fades out around you. So like you step out onto the the dry, sort of almost like Martian uh, landscape, right? The the dirt. But then as your feet crunch on the gravel. Uh, everything around you goes black and you are standing on uh, you're standing on this black featureless void Uh, your feet are in about an inch of water uh, and red stars sort of shimmer around and a woman materializes in front of you tall and her form ever changing always a woman powerful strong usually garbed as a warrior of some kind carrying some sometimes looking you know in a in a uniform like of the war sometimes just as a a mercenary with a blade sometimes looking like a demon uh, carrying uh, twisted uh, spiked armor and hellish weapons uh And she introduces herself. Just one moment as I double check this name. Add it up a 
moment ago. As she introduces herself as Dwami, Warden of the Red Sun. Ah, tell me, visitors, what brings you to the Red? We're looking for some... No, if I'm being honest, I'm not entirely sure what they are. The sodality of Vryn? Uh, sodality. Looking for. Excellent. So you've come to the Red to prove yourself. Not I'm exactly seeking a what challenge. I, not really what I had in mind, but if, I, if that's what has to be done, that's what has to be done. Red is a place of challenge and struggle. Unless you seek to disrespect it, Islay. Of course not. Good. Excellent. Well, I think I shall enjoy the mere entertainment of your presence. Welcome to the Red. And she dissolves and everything resolves itself back into this same Martian-like landscape. And that's where we're going to end for tonight uh, as we wrap up uh, Invisible Sun for a couple of weeks because uh, we have many commitments in the gray over the next couple of weeks um, with I've got some vacation coming up uh, that I'm going to be out of town. Uh, and, uh, and then we also have Gen Con coming up, which I know at least Alex and Sam will be busy at that Saturday night. So we'll be back on, uh, on August 10th. Uh, so we're going to wrap up by doing our usual. We're going to go around and do our outros. Uh, you can remind people, you can promote anything that you have to promote. Uh, but we'll also do our character summaries and see if there's any, uh, acumen, joy, despair, that sort of thing. And then we are going to raid uh, Ken Davidson, sending our viewers over to continue the charity stream there uh, as, uh, as Ken's going to play some stuff. And I'm just going to confirm things as you go out. So I'm going to kick it over to, we'll do sort of the reverse. So why don't we start with you, Sam? Okay. Um, mm, mm, mm. I... <laughs> I don't have the actual like um, arc opened up, so I don't know what the exact steps are. But I feel like Alice and Lucky are doing good on their develop a bond arc. Oh yes, right, had, right. I feel like um, maybe our side scene should have granted an acumen. Mm -hmm. But I don't know because I don't know what the steps are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and also side scenes, usually the reward of side scenes is just whatever progress comes out. It's not usually acumen, joy, or despair from side scenes. Um, oh. Although sometimes we, sometimes we make exceptions because uh, we've handled whole arcs uh, in side scenes. Um, I would say bet between uh, the side scene and like your interactions in in this session for sure i think both lucky and alice advanced that arc we okay so we so you can both mark a, a acumen for that An yeah acumen. okay um like so that alice means i do... probably saved your life tonight so probably yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so since we got the acumen that means there's no joy and despair right uh no those are two separate things so okay. so acumen you can you can accumulate lots of acumen uh although usually you probably only advance one arc me yeah. to in a in a session uh with joy or despair you might get none or you get one or the other so at most you get a uh, joy or despair so if there was something particular 
I mean, Lucky took a lot of serious hits tonight <laughs> and lots of magical flux. And yeah. I don't know if that's really despair worthy. But... I would say if I was looking at it, given that Lucky uh, shepherds mines as their forte and has and, no resistance defense and <laughs> totally had their mind pummeled every time. I don't think you you succeeded on on a single uh, mm, yeah. no I did I did I okay. did succeed on one resist the right. first time when um... the first yeah so the overwhelming majority of mental assaults on Lucky were successful yes. I, I think yeah. that I could see being worthy of a despair okay. but it's sort of seeing the limitations okay. of what you've developed in your um, mental magic uh, yeah capacities. not doing as good as I thought I was <laughs> Um anyway, uh um, um go buy uncaged volume two. Absolutely. They should, buy uncaged <laughs> they should buy uncaged volume two. If they don't have uncaged volume one, they should buy uncaged they should volume also buy one. That because it's nominated for an any. That's right. And are you sold out of your lanyards yet? No, I have like nine of the jewel ones and like ten of the weapons or maybe the so, other way around but anyway yeah, so, they're so people should almost go buy sold your, out so people should go buy your lanyards people should go buy my lanyards too <laughs> yeah. yeah i was thinking of go buying one to use uh, at work i flip back and forth between a belt clip and a lanyard for my id at work and get the weapons one and be really hardcore <laughs> I, think, I think the weapons one would be pretty hardcore at the hospital. yeah at, at the hospital where we have prohibitions on like everything <laughs> I'll wear it that, awesome. and I'll buy the Swordfall uh, t-shirt that says I'm romantically attracted to knives. Perfect. And, uh, and wear that to work and see how long <laughs> it is before I get fired. <laughs> All right, perfect. No, I like that. Great. Uh, so I think going in the reverse order, we would go next to Alex for Emma Elizabeth. Um... I think, well, I, we made it to the red, so I feel like that's progress with respect to uh, Uncover a Secret. Um, yeah, absolutely. I would also think that she might have made progress in terms of, like, redemption, because in the field, she really kind of took charge of protecting everybody, um, even Lucky. Um, and That's true. She, and like she, like she couldn't close her eyes in order to, mm -hmm. uh, to actually like safely yep. lead everyone across the field. So she kind of did put herself out there uh, mm -hmm. to get everyone uh, across which, the field, which the old EE wouldn't have done. Not, oh, no, yeah. God, no. Especially okay. if you're lucky, she left him there. Yeah. Okay. No, I buy that. I buy that. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's so that's too accurate. And as far as joy goes, I mean, Starro here is by far and away the most powerful thing I've ever put in the box. So, uh, yeah, what was the most powerful up till this point? Um, Shadow Weaver, the crazy cat lady. Do you remember what that one? It was. I got it with seven, so, so it might have been five, but I, I spent was, seven sorcery on it. I think it, it was, was five. So this yeah. one would be higher, uh, not by much. It's actually only level six, but it's, oh. uh, but it's, it's, um, it had bonuses to things. Yeah. So like creatures can have their level, but then have particular things that they're higher at. Yeah. So it had a big bonus on resist. Okay. So then maybe not. I, I, as Alex perceived it to be uh, a, a mean motherfucker. So it, it definitely was. Uh, now that I think about, it, I'll, I'll, we'll double check on the Shadow Weaver and see. But sure. it's it's definitely I think the nastiest thing that you've mm -hmm. put in in terms of hurting you. Yeah. So for sure. So if so, joy. If mm -hmm. not, I mean, you did also just quasi participate in ripping a hole in the actuality. Yeah, that would not be good. Um, which which I, yeah, on the whole redemption thing might. Yeah. All right. So we'll we'll look at those two. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. Uh, Corey and Alice. Yeah. So we already got to develop a bond one. So yeah, one acumen there. 
Um, the other one is Alice tested out some more of her obsidian nature that she's been exploring. So I was thinking maybe acumen for transformation arc. Um, if that makes sense. Yes. Yep. I think so. And then um, Alice, I think, was quite distraught that she was forced to listen to awful stories that she thought were beneath her. <laughs> so I was thinking that would be a despair. Yeah, I think so. For a storyteller to get so engrossed in the gray stuff. Yeah. I buy that. Yeah, it's like a very advanced, or not like an advanced author, but like a very well-read person reading like cheesy gossip magazines or something. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and I think that was it for Alice. Okay, perfect. Uh, all right, Annie and Henrietta. Um, the only thing I can think of is that Henry uh, disgorged a new creature. That's right, so that should be a joy. Yeah. Otherwise, I can't think of anything in particular. Yeah, I think your main current arc, arc is going to be mostly after this. Yeah. Going to go to the red, then you're going to go to the green. Yeah. We're going to have a nice time in the green, guys. Nothing bad will happen, I promise. And you might still find information here that helps. Yeah. Right? So you can still advance the arc. Mm hmm. For sure. Oh. Okay. Yeah, we'll Excellent. We'll be going for that. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Thanks to my wonderful players. I think this was a very uh, interesting session uh, that pushed some people to to the edge uh, in a good way, and uh, and we've had some fun. Uh, so we are going to go uh, raid Ken to keep the whole charity thing going. So I'm going to send us on our outro, outro, and we'll see you back here August 10th for more As the Suns Burn. And we'll be pining for the fjord, so to speak, and, uh, <laughs> and missing playing this game. Mm -hmm. All right. Excellent. Uh, so yeah. thanks, everyone, and good night. <laughs>